This happens in literally every restaurant that you've ever been to. Oil that is heated over and over and over again. Restaurants do not change the seed oil daily. And I'll tell you what else happens. If on a restaurant fryer, when you turn it to off, it's not really off. <laughs> the oil just goes down to like 200 degrees overnight. Um, and that's just convenient for the restaurant because like when the fry cook comes in the next morning hung over at 1045 and he has to start serving at 11, he's going to flip that thing back up to 350 and it's a lot faster to go from 200 to 350 than it is from room temperature all the way up to 350 so that he can get those first orders when they come out at 1105. Oil in restaurant fryers is hot all the time. Um, it's hotter during service, right? But the whole time it's heated. A tank of fryer oil in, in the smallest fryers costs about 50 bucks. And, you know, it takes um, it takes an hour or two, maybe two hours to clean out the fryer. And if you're paying somebody 15 bucks an hour to clean out the fryer, the cost to change the fryer oil is $80 at least. Uh, and then there's, you know, taxes and fees on top of that $15 an hour. So it's probably closer to $100. And then you have a disposal issue. Because now you have all these jugs of hot oil um, and hot, you know, what are you, what are you doing with them, right? And, and so, so there's all kinds of reasons why restaurants don't replace their fryer oil all the time. I, I mean, could you imagine? So, okay, so if it really costs $100 a day, if a small restaurant swap their oil out every day, well, that's $30,000 a year. <laughs> so restaurants don't do it. And there's actually papers. This is a, this is a paper. It's from Spain. Um, and you can see, like I say, in Spain, all of the fryers have uh, sunflower oil in them. Um, in America, it's all soybean oil, although they also sell jugs of canola oil. Um, you can look them up in your Cisco catalog, right? And so they asked fry cooks in Spain, and these were from large food service organizations that run cafeterias. So school cafeterias, corporate cafeterias, hospital cafeterias, these are large companies. Some of them uh, were operating like 1,100 cafeterias. And so they, they, they you know, contacted HR or whatever, and they sent these um, questionnaires to the fry cooks. And they said, how often, at, at, in your cafeteria, what is the policy for how often you change the fryer oil? And, <laughs> and the results are great. And it was just what I knew it would be, but, you know, basically the results are like every two weeks, every two weeks, once a month, every two months, some of them said, and then a lot of them were no defined frequency, just kind of like whenever. We change the fryer oil whenever. So, and then there's a, and then there's a separate table where they asked them, well, when was the last time you changed the fryer oil? And, you know, some of them were like five weeks ago. And so, and so this oil, you know, when you, when you go to, I mean, your kids at school, when you go to a restaurant, any restaurant, the nice French bistro down the street, that oil, everybody uses sunflower. So we, we you know, <laughs> we, right. So we just put straight sun. We used to have hydrogenated oils in the fryers. I'm not a fan of trans fats. I'm not arguing for them, but <laughs> they're much more stable in the fryers. And they don't break down as quickly. And chemists in the 60s knew that. And that's why, you know, they said, well, if you're going to put this into a deep fryer, you should use the hydrogenated oil, not the, not straight soybean oil. But now we outlawed those and we didn't really come up with a good replacement. And so now restaurants are just putting straight uh, soybean oil in their fryers and let them rip for five weeks. <laughs> so when you go in for dinner and order those fries... Some of that oil has been continuously heated for a month. There's really not much evidence about it, right? Like, <laughs> it's never really been tested in humans. I, I can tell you that there are all kinds of animal experience using reheated fryer oil with really bad results. Um, I'm very interested in the history of obesity. There's a very interested, interesting, fairly recent one where they take rabbits and they give them um, either 1% fresh soybean oil or 1% oil that's been heated and reheated and reheated and reheated and reheated and reheated. And 
the rabbits uh, that get the reheated oil or the multiply reheated oil, um, they become obese compared to the normal rabbits, but they actually eat less. So it's, it's less calories, more fatter um, due to the reheated fryer oil. And so fryer oils have a very interesting, um, and it, one of the interesting things about fryer oil is they clearly increase activity level of a gene called PPAR alpha, one of these nuclear receptors that I, I think I already mentioned, but, um, and probably also PPAR gamma and probably also the era hydrocarbon receptor. And that is, is affecting your basic metabolic, your basic metabolism, right? It's, it, they're doing all kinds of things. I pulled a couple of papers about how fast do, how fast do these oils break down? And you can see, and, and I like this one because it shows that beef tallow, beef tallow is the standard, right? It's the standard. And you can see, so um, in this first graph, th this is really hot. This is about 400 degrees. That's hotter than most fryers run. But you can see that, um, so we have these standards called uh, polar, uh, the polar fraction of the oil. So oils break down um, to things called aldehydes. Basically, they oxidize. The double bonds the double bonds are sources of oxidative damage and that causes the fryer oil to break down in all these aldehydes like nonanol and hexanol and all these other things. And another thing they can do is they can, they can polymerize. So if you have a triglyceride that has like three chains of fats on it, right, attached to a glycerol molecule and they can cross-link. And so then what happens if you have one triglyceride attached to another triglyceride attached to another triglyceride and that's it's kind of like linoleum or something right and so and so you have these polymerized oils and then you have these oils that are breaking down into all these aldehydes and other oxidized things and they i'm sure they make hundreds of different molecules we probably don't even know what a lot of them are and and so when they look at these at these fryer oils you know uh after a week um some of them are at like 20 percent of the volume of the fryer oil are these aldehydes. And another 20% might be uh, these polymers. And so, you know, when, when you go into that restaurant, and so, and, yeah, if you look at this chart, like the beef tallow holds out the longest versus, and this one is at regular, uh, so when we looked at the, at the sunflower, or the, sorry, soybean oil versus beef tallow at 400 degrees, the, the, the soybean oil hits like 30% of polar molecules in like three or four days, right? So by the end of the week, it's toast at 400 degrees. But even at 350, all of these oils are breaking down faster than beef tallow, which is the old standard. And those other lines that are basically running parallel right with the beef tallow, those are partially hydrogenated oils. And so those are the oils that used to be in fryers. And again, I'm not... I'm not arguing in favor of trans fats. I'm not. I'm just saying that there's a reason why we made trans fats in the first place, and it's because vegetable oils are unstable, and it's a bad idea to fry with them. Here's another paper that I really like, um, and what it's showing is it's showing that you can see the lines on these graphs. Um, so <laughs> one of the things is, is it's showing the heat oil for up to 50 hours, right? at deep frying temperatures. So that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good test, right? They did this for a while. And what happens is those two lines on the bottom are the saturated fat and the monounsaturated fat. And so, so this is soybean oil. So it contains some saturated fat and it contains some monounsaturated fat. And you can see those lines are flat, right? Um, those fats aren't really breaking down over time. The line that, that, is, that is descending over time well, that's the polyunsaturated fats. The polyunsaturated fats are the ones that are breaking down in the deep fryer of soybean oil over the, over the 50 hours. And that line that's rising, um, that is one of the, uh, that's one of the aldehydes. Um, it's a particularly common one. And it's not uh, the, the, the right hand axis is the amount of the aldehyde. So, at the end of the experiment, the aldehyde is up to one half of 1% of all of the oil. And like I said, that aldehyde is one out of maybe 200. So, uh, you know, if the soybean oil goes from 
55% linoleic acid down to 35% linoleic acid, that suggests that uh, 20% of that oil is aldehydes and oxidized oils. And that is what we are all eating all of the time. And we haven't done any studies in humans, so we don't know the effects. <laughs> so next time when you go to a restaurant, think about this before you order those french fries.